All right, brothers and sisters, this is going to be part three of the lecture, Haile Selassie and the Tower of Babel, or Babel, Babylon. Now, hopefully you would have seen part two, you understand, in part one, part one and two in their orders, and now we're going to move into and continue in part three. Now, what we were saying in the previous part, what we had left off was concerning the view of Babylon in the book of Revelation, in Johannes Rai, right? And that there's both a symbolical political Babylon and a symbolical religious Babylon that are in view. For they both are alike under the tyranny of the beast. Now, the religious Babylon is destroyed by political Babylon, according to Revelation um, 17 and 16. Political Babylon by the appearing of the Lord, according to Revelation uh, 19, 19 to 21. Now, our brother in uh, Smyrna, Smyrna, or it could be sister, but I, I, I think it's a, it's a brother in Smyrna, Angel had commented when we made a statement about um, his majesty um, being crucified on the world stage or politically crucified. And this is to kind of expand on that particular teaching. And when we get into Revelation chapter 19, the interesting thing that we have is we have the King of Kings in view, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In other words, Christ in his kingly character in view. And so when it says that the political Babylon was destroyed by the appearing of the Lord, by the appearance of the King of Kings in Geneva or Geneva, Swiss Agar, or Geneva, Switzerland, that destroyed the League of Nations, the League of Gentiles. Basically, to say the League of Nations is to say the League of the Anglo-Europeans, mm -hmm. or the League of White Supremacy, or the League of the Goyim, which represents the times of the Gentiles. Now, that was before the UN. You understand? So let's just note that as the first the first destruction of that, the first destruction of the League of Nations, and this is the fulfillment of this in present times and real world history, so the judgment of God and history. That Babylon is, that Babylon, the city, is not to be rebuilt. You understand? It's clear in Isaiah chapter 19, 22, Jeremiah 51 verse 24 to 26 and 62 to 64. By political Babylon is meant the Gentile world system. So they could not do a Geneva, Switzerland move again. But then over here in New York, we have now the, the United Nations. So if we look at this correctly, we have almost three times. We have ancient times, which the, the Bible is speaking of and the history bears witness to that. Then we have the appearance of the King of Kings, you know, saying before the, the Armageddon or the gathering of the nations, the League of Nations, the destruction of that. And now we're in the final time of this prophecy, and we have the United Nations and presently what's going on in the, in the world scene, right? But, it, but this, present, this present thing that we're witnessing now, we have to put into context what was done against his majesty, what was done against Ethiopia, what was done against that righteous wave that was sweeping across Africa. And it seems as though that, 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 that times have changed in the times of, Gentile, of times of the Gentile. But that's another trick. That's another deception. By political Babylon is meant the Gentile world system. So when we look at the white supremacy, the European world system presently, it's in a lot, it's like in the death throes, you know, it's in the death throes. They, they want to keep ruling people, but people now want to be free and rule themselves. And, and the white people say, well, you're not ready for democracy just yet. Let us help you out. Let us such and such. And they're saying, we, we may take a little bit of your help, but leave us alone. Let us do what we want to do. And so we see what's going on with the economics. We have our first black president. We have the country and the, and the Gentile world system, as they say, teetering on the edge of the abyss, 
the abyss is part of the Revelation prophecy 2012. We see all of these things coming into perfect alignment, the signs on earth as well as in the heavens and upon men and people. Now, in order to understand the world, the Schofield Study Bible gives us John chapter 7, verse 7, and Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Now, when you see these references in your study time, I would really advise, not all the time you'll be able to, you, like right now we're just going to go through some of this, but in your own study time to go through these and to take notes of this in your own copy book or your study book, your depth time, it's very important that you go into these references because when you get into references, in spirit and in truth, they will open up and explain additional things, and then more of the picture one will be able to receive to Kabbalah, to Kabbalah, in this illumination of the King of Kings and his Christ. So it may be added that in scripture symbolism, in the Metaph, Mesaleawi, Net, or Lisan, or language, Egypt stands for the world as such. So Egypt, this is why they keep saying to us in these documentaries that, that, that everything is, kind of goes back to Egypt in one sense or another because Egypt stands for the world as such. And when we, when we comprehend how the Egyptians built up that like no man's land and the flood lands and, 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 and constructed Egypt, Egypt was considered to be the world. It was a sort of a system. Now we have the spiritual Egypt, which is based on the so-called ancient Egypt or the spirit of the ancient Egypt as the ancient, quote, world system. This is why when we look at the beast that rose up afterward, all of them are in one way or another um, indebted to Egypt, except for Ethiopia. Now, understand that, except for Ethiopia or Ethiopia the biblical land of the king of kings and his Christ, as well as, biblically speaking, of Nimrod, who has been demonized in the Freemasonic and among counterfeit Christians. He's been broadly um, demonized, but Egypt stands for the world as such. Babylon for the world of corrupt power and corrupt religion. So when we speak about Babylon, we should speak about it in context of the glory of his majesty to get the maximum word, sound, and power effect. That means if we say something is Babylon, it should represent the world of corrupt power or corrupt authority and corrupt religion and corrupt religion. So it deals with corrupt power or the politics and then the penal system, um, polytheism, you know, we put all the, all, all the so-called P's there and corrupt religion. Now, Nineveh, in the scripture, Nineveh, it stands for pride. Now, what's interesting is this. Do you know what the Kurdistan, they call it Kurdistan over there in Iraq, so from so on. That was ancient Nineveh. That was actually where Jonah went to. So understand this. Christ said that the only sign that will be given is the sign of Jonah and the sign of the Queen of Sheba. And now the system of things, the world system of things, Mystery Babylon, has fought against ancient Babylon and gone over and occupied that region of the world, which was known as Babylon and Nineveh. How interesting. So that shows us that now what we see going on in the Horn of Africa, even with the famine sort of situation and other events in that region of the world, now is pointing to the Queen of Sheba aspect, even the talk about the Ark of the Covenant and a possible sale of an Ark of the Covenant. So haughty glory of the world. There's a haughtiness of the glory of the world. Now there's one other note for chapter 13 of Isaiah, because it's important for us, since we're at this point of revelation and prophecy, to look at what the scriptures teach and the proper context or perspective of the scripture. So when we are now listening or reading about world events and seeing what's going on around us, the spirit of truth will be able to guide our hearts and minds in the right and righteousness way because we would know the truth. You understand? It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So the glory of his majesty is the Bible. Now we need to study that and show ourselves approved. Now, verses 12 to 16 of Isaiah chapter 13, it looks forward to the apocalyptic judgments. Now, it looks, the apocalyptic judgments, apocalypse means unveiling. 
the unveiling of these judgments. Now we can see a record of iniquity, but what we are also witnessing and going to witness more is the unveiling of these apocalyptic judgments, Revelation chapter 6 to Revelation chapter 13. Verses 17 to 22 have a near and a far view. So it's telling us that verses 17 to verse 22 of Isaiah chapter 13, they have a near view to like the present time and also to future time. And remember when this was written and noted, we are probably and most likely closer to the far view or the furthest view of these particular prophecies. So what we need to do is recognize the root and then see how the tree has grown, and then we can judge by the fruit. They predict the destruction of the literal Babylon then existing. So the Babylon that was then existing, it was predicted before it was destroyed that it would be destroyed and not built again. And we see that it has not been built again. They say Saddam was trying to build it up, but we see what the Americans and the Gentiles did to stop that. So that was a kind of uh, a fulfillment of this prophecy here with the further statement that once destroyed Babylon should never be rebuilt according to Jeremiah 51 verses 61 to 64 so it shouldn't be far-fetched for us to to think and say that the Almighty that Jah had them do that if Saddam was trying to build Babylon again then Jah had that done because he's also had other Gentiles in his service such as uh, Koresh or Cyrus and, you know, Cyrus and Dyrus and the rest of those Gentiles also were, by comparison, righteous or, or Gentiles who did good in the context of Jah, Rastafar, in the context of the Bible, in the context of the Most High. Now, all of this has been literally fulfilled. So we can study history and see that a lot of this has been fulfilled. Now, the real mystery, the real revelation is where are we at now? and what still is in need of fulfillment. But the place of this prediction in a great prophetic strain, which looks forward to the destruction of both political Babylon or politico, they actually call it politico. You know, there's a magazine out there. You can look it up on the, the, the Google or whatever, politico. So we have politico Babylon and ecclesio or ecclesiastical, but they call it ecclesio Babylon in the time of the beast shows that the destruction of the actual Babylon, it typifies, it's a type of the greater destruction yet to come upon the mystical Babylons. Upon the what? The mystical Babylons. Now, that, that's a whole other level. So we're dealing with mystical Babylon. That's why I call it mystery. The mystery is mystical. That means they, they move in symbolism and using sigils and using various forms and mythologies. And this is the world system that we currently are in. I mean, if you go to any of the even churches and political institutions in Babylon, you notice all these statues and they have all these Greek and ancient, you know, paganistic kind of symbolism. That's, that's an actual, well, most people don't pay attention to that because their eyes are not open because they, even if they read in the Bible, they don't know that particular, that particular um, truth right there. So his majesty's entering into the world scene of things is, is very, very prophetic. You understand? And part of the prophecy has been fulfilled in and through his majesty, but the groundwork for the ultimate fulfillment that we went over in summary just now has already been laid. But the real ones that need to be reached are that number that Revelation talks about, those numbers who still are to be reached, Speaking about the Beta Israel, the Black Sea, as well as the other righteous Gentiles. That's why the, the, the message of, of preaching, you understand, the true good news. See, people say that they're preaching the gospel, but they, they, they're preaching another gospel. They're not preaching the gospel here. Must connect with His Majesty Ethiopia as a new Israel and Babylon straight down into white supremacy, the Anglo-Europeans. This is what makes their part of, you know, when you listen to some of their Bible kind of stuff, some things they actually touch on. But then there's a fullness that's not there. There's like an emptiness. 
because they willfully deny the testimony of the King of Kings. It's interesting that the Plain Truth magazine actually bore witness, and a lot of ones during the time of His Majesty bore witness to it, but it's interesting how soon they, they forget. You understand? Because there was a willful or intentional smear campaign against his imperial majesty, you, you, you know, and um, the, the part that we wanted to touch on, now that we kind of laid this particular foundation in teaching, the part that we wanted to um, touch on was the UN. We just saw something right here, was the UN. The part that we wanted to speak on was the UN. Because now the UN, interestingly enough, in the speech of His Majesty, both the League of Nations and 26, 27 years later, when he spoke to the United Nations, he gives an a ominous warning, and he lays down much of the context for the present um, global or international world order. It's like, once again, they didn't listen to him in 1936, you see, but then 27 years Later, in 1963, now notice the numbers, 3 and 6, 6 and 3, and the number 27. You understand? And, and both of those numbers, 3 and 6 is 9, 6 and 3 is 9, and then 2 and 7 is also 9, and 9 is a number of Rastafari, of Rastafari revelation as well as fulfillment, but the square root of 9, right, is 3. So the square root of nine is, is three, and three is the trinity. And then here, my eye just glanced on this, where it speaks in chapter 13 of the Jewish remnant. That's how they put it then. But more correctly, it'll be the, the lion of Judah remnant, or the Judaic remnant, in the sense of Moa and Bessa, the Emenegeta Yehuda. This is what it's actually speaking of in spirit and in truth. Then it mentioned Isaiah 1 and 9, Romans 2 and 5. Then it speaks about the great, in the Great Tribulation, that there would be a Judaic remnant, a black Jewish remnant, and that's who we are in this present time, that would be in the Great Tribulation, Psalm 2 and 5, Revelation 7, 14, they say compare with Zechariah 14, verses 1 to 2. And it says in verse 12, I will make a man, a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold, golden wedge of Ophir. Now, Ophir, the gold of Ophir, links with East Africa and in particular with Ethiopia, with Ethiopia. This is why when we get to um, Psalm 87, Psalm 87, verse 4, it says, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon, Rahab, a mystic name, some say, of ancient Egypt, or of um, uh, Tiamat, as well as, as the old dragon, um, and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia, that's the Palestine, Palestinians, and Tyre. Tyre is those coastal cities. We can even say that's, that's the present Israel in a sense. Tyre with Ethiopia. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. This man was born there, so that Ethiopic connection, ones might try to brush it off, but it's either in ignorance or in willful disobedience. And we hope that's in the former and not the latter, because there's good people and there are wicked people, and the King of Kings teaches how to deal with both. Verse 13 says, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. Is this what we are anticipating? To occur, whether in 2012 or thereabouts. I mean, I, I, I've been thinking about it kind of a couple, you know, I, I've kind of meditated on it too. I mean, what is in a sense to come and what is to come, how that would be experienced. And look what, listen to what it says here in verse 13. 13, 13, it says, Therefore I will shake the heavens, that Yahweh, Eloheinu, Baruchu, says he will shake the heavens. The stars. Is this what it means that the stars would, would, would fall out of place? The stars out of place, in that sense? And the earth shall remove out of her place with the whole magnetic, you know, core of the earth and, and the polar shifts. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the wrath of Yahweh Baot, 
and in the day of his fierce anger. This is interesting because in this particular, as you go further, it speaks in verse 17, Behold, I will stir up the Medes, the Medes against them. The Medes would be part of Iraq, but also some of Iran, the Medo-Persia. You know, the Medo-Persia link, and Persia is the end of the Babylonian matrix. We said it before, but we'll say it again. And the more you hear about Iran in the news, and the more you see Iran in the news, especially with aggressive, violent tendencies on both sides of it, then we're coming down to the Menemenetekul Ufarisen, which in this context is connected with the Great Tribute, the Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation. So, we want to point that out with uh, how a man will be more precious than fine gold. The wisdom of his majesty in his Christ was more precious, not just for Ethiopia, but the whole world system and the entire world order during his visible manifestation and during those times where he visited all nations. And, and he bore witness to the law of God, to the, to the Ten Commandments, as well as to the testimony of Jesus Christos. And he's our king, kinsman. He's our redeemer in and through the word of God and in and through his Christ. So it, it, it brings the picture full cipher. And so when we talk about Haile Selassie and the Tower of Babel, notice how the United Nations has one tower. Uh-huh. Wish we could insert a picture right here where you can see the United Nations has this one, it, it, there's this one tower. And if you look at it from the side, you see that the part of the building that curves in, it's almost like um, it's almost like a, a a half moon in a sense at, at the tower's foot. When you look at and the United Nations has this one this one long tower. How interesting! On some levels, it looks like the artist reconstruction of King Solomon's um, temple that have that long um, tower part. How they reconstruct it? Really, they're talking about Herod's. You know what they're talking about is Herod's temple. You know, people confuse Solomon's temple for Herod's temple. Mm. And that is something that needs to be distinguished right there. So, getting once again and returning once again to our foundational part of our study here. There's one other book we want to also introduce into the King's Evidence. Let's, let's introduce this book now while we have the time. Because we thought that we could wrap this up in one particular in one particular portion, but it's taken us a, this is the third part. This is a book called The Ibogaine Story, Report on the Staten Island Project. Has the cure for addiction, check this out, has the cure for addiction been suppressed since the 60s? A lot of things happened since the 60s. It's like many of us think we're in a, we're in a time loop, a consciousness time loop, where we're actually in a different time that things are not as they seem. But because the human consciousness being what it is, it has generated, you know, almost like a computer program. A certain way of thinking has generated a certain reality, you know, a certain reality. And therefore, even the makers of um, subliminal suggestion products and type of things like that, they understand that very well. Because if you don't know something, you can't access that. If it has a benefit official aspect to your life, you're going to lose that just because of suppression of information. And there's a lot that has been suppressed since such a time. So this is a very good, um, this is talking about ibogaine, an African, so-called African uh, plant that they classify as a special drug that they have found actually it cures addiction. It cures addiction to drinking you know, to alcoholic addiction. It cures addiction to so-called tobacco or cigarettes, really more to cigarettes. There's a difference between cigarettes and tobacco, but we'll touch on that.